I hope you enjoy my stories. Instead of just clicking thumbs down, please comment and share how we can do better. If you do like our video then please like and subscribe. The days on the farm had always held a rhythm all their own. Roosters crowing in the pre-dawn stillness the hum of the tractor as the first rays of sunlight touched the fields and the contented lowing of cattle on the pasture. My family had farmed this land for four generations. Each pond, each rock, and every furrow in the soil bore the marks of our hard work and dedication. The calm was shattered the day I found the first letter from the Homeowners Association stuffed into my mailbox. These newly constructed mini-mansions had started cropping up about a year ago bringing with them folks seeking a taste of country living without understanding the blood sweat and tears that went into maintaining it. Their complaints started almost immediately. First, the tractor sitting in the front field seemed to offend them. Ignorant to its necessity in daily operations, they labeled it an eyesore. Ridiculous as it was, I tried to brush it off. But when I received letter after letter criticizing our barns and outbuildings, it started to bother me. The cherry on top was when my grandfather old man Wilkins saw a couple of nosy strangers poking around our barns and went out with his trusted 12-gauge to see what was going on. Those strangers turned out to be HOA inspectors. They confidently declared their so-called rights to inspect every nook and cranny to ensure compliance with their rules. Oh, how I was proud of Grandpa that day. The old man didn't hesitate to educate them on boundary rights and the dangers of trespassing. Lucky for them, he restrained himself from teaching a more permanent lesson with old buckshot. My family's property is fenced and prominently posted with no trespassing signs, but some folks need a verbal nudge too. A few days later, the HOA board sent me a snarky letter demanding my compliance or else they'd fine me $1,000 a day until the tractor and other offending structures were removed. That did it. I personally marched to their shiny new headquarters to set things straight. I informed them in no uncertain terms that our farm and its workings were none of their business and that their so-called authority ended at my fence line. If any inspector set foot on my land again I'd be happy to let them chat with my grandfather. Or better yet the county sheriff. It didn't take long for the sheriff to receive a complaint from the HOA. Sheriff Talbot was a good friend of the family having grown up in these parts himself. He and I sat on the front porch with a couple of cold beers as I told him the whole infuriating saga. He chuckled and shook his head later paying the HOA a visit to clarify a few legal boundaries. He made them realize I had every right to deny entry to my property and that our loud tractors were a staple of rural life, not a disturbance. He also mentioned quite seriously that their inspectors would end up behind bars if they trespassed again. I thought that would be the end of it, but the next letter came from their lawyer. It was a pompous cease and desist demand claiming that our farm's operations were devaluing their precious mini-mansions. I forwarded the letter to my lawyer who practically fell out of his chair laughing. Luckily, he managed to compose himself long enough to draft a sternly worded response pointing out the absurdity of their claims. Legally, they didn't have a leg to stand on. For added measure, I called for a town meeting and invited the HOA board to attend. It was high time they learned the history of this land, the efforts that went into maintaining it, and the community that stood united against their frivolous demands. When they showed up, they seemed taken aback by the number of locals who came to support our farm. A large vocal crowd of farmers, ranchers, shop owners, and even the newfound town council. I spoke plainly to them reiterating that our farm had operated here for generations and we'd continue to do so. The land was already being prepared for a fifth generation takeover and no development plans or greedy promises could change that. I explained the importance of farming and how our methods respected and sustained the land. I underscored how deeply tied we were to this place and informed them in no uncertain terms that any further harassment would be met with severe legal action. There were murmurs of agreement from the crowd and I could see some HOA members exchanging worried glances. They believed the smooth-talking developer who had long since disappeared with their money convincing them that our farm was temporary. Now they were confronted with a reality they hadn't anticipated. A steadfast resolve to preserve the farm and a united community willing to back it. Their attempts to bully us continued for a bit. More letters, meetings, and even another court case. Each time they lost, each time they were forced to confront the stubborn fact that our farm was here to stay. The legal battles became a routine, cutting into their funds and leaving them scrambling to justify their expenses to increasingly disgruntled homeowners. One particularly satisfying moment came when the county court ruled in our favor, solidifying our right to operate free from HOA interference. It was a victory not just for us, but for every family-run farm that stubbornly held on despite urban encroachment. With our rights firmly recognized by the court and our resolve unshaken, the HOA had little choice but to back off. 
What began as an infuriating disruption ended up reinforcing the community's commitment to supporting one another. There were more gatherings, more shared efforts, and a greater sense of unity among those who appreciated the honest labor these lands demanded. As for the HOA, they faced growing discontent from their own residents. Lawsuits and legal fees had drained their coffers, and without the developers' promised growth, they found themselves on shaky ground. Homeowners turned against the board, demanding answers, and eventually, the HOA's authority waned when new board members chose peace over pointless litigation. Over time, relations improved somewhat out of necessity, we shared a locality after all. Their manicured lawns and mini mansions settled into a grudging coexistence with the pastoral charm of our farm. The buzzing of my trusty old tractor across the fields persisted, now a familiar note in the complex symphony of rural and suburban life intertwined. Every once in a while, I'd catch an unfamiliar car pulling into the field, its occupants peering curiously across the landscape. But these days, it wasn't fear or distrust I felt. We had earned our respect and continued our legacy, constantly driven by the beautiful vision of my great-grandchild strapping into that same tractor, plowing the fields under the ever-watchful eyes of their ancestors, each echo of the land now grounded in an unmovable, unyielding history. In case they start back up again you need to start raising pigs, immediately. This will definitely get their undivided attention and respect. Then when you offer to have them purchase your hog farming operation, letting them know they can close it down, for a good price they will pay and then shut up if they are even half wits. But I'll bet they're not. Yeah, pig farm, that's the way to go. Have fun with it. I agree but no, chickens, a chicken farm is the way to go. When the wind gets just right, you can smell them three miles away. And it is pungent. That is the one animal smell you can't get over. Laughing my ass off, my family's farm is about three miles from a commercial chicken farm that reeks to high heaven at the best of times. I recall about 20 years ago, they sent a letter to a lot of the farmers in our area offering their manure for sale. They advertised it as having a low odor and a peanut butter-like consistency. My dad never took them up on the offer but some did and when we drove by those fields afterwards, we knew that the low odor was absolute bullshit. Oh, settle in now, young fella, and I'll spin you a yarn that's as twisted as an old oak tree. I've been around for a good 75 years, seen the seasons come and go and weathered more storms than most. But let me tell you, nothing's riled me up quite like these young whippersnappers from what they call the Homeowners Association, or HOA, for short. It all started when some city slicker developer bought a heap of land right next to my farm. They threw up these tiny cookie-cutter houses quicker than you could shake a stick at. My family's been working this land since 1790, almost 250 years. And we've got a good 25,000 acres here. When that developer came knocking trying to buy my land, I sent him packing with his tail between his legs. For a while, things were quiet. But then these HOA folks decided to make themselves a nuisance. They kept coming onto my land like they had some right to it. One time I was away for a couple of weeks tending to some family matters up north. When I got back, half my equipment was gone and one of my chicken coops had been torn down. My farmhands had already headed home, but I rigged up some cameras and it didn't take long to figure out who the culprits were. Soon as I rang up Sheriff Johnson, he's been a friend for nigh on 55 years, he came right over, shook his head and helped me round up my stolen gear. Then came the letters, fines, threats, the whole shebang. They were claiming I had to follow their HOA rules because they could see my property from their development. I told them, by that logic, since I can see your houses, I should be able to put farm stuff on your lawns. That really got their goat. Before long, we were standing in front of the judge. Now our local judge is a sensible man. He ruled in my favor, saying I wasn't part of their blamed HOA and didn't have to follow their fool rules. I figured that'd be the end of it, but these folks didn't give up easy. They started harassing me something fierce. Now here's the thing. I've done well with investments over the years. So I decided to turn up the heat. I ordered 500 head of pigs and built their pen right up against the HOA's fence line, about 30 feet away. Winter was settling in, but come spring and summer, they'd get a real whiff of farm life. Of course, they hauled us back to court claiming all sorts of nonsense. Lost again, they did. The Judge Musta had a good chuckle after that case. But it didn't dissuade them none. So I thought, why stop at pigs? I built a big old chicken coop further down the line, filling it with a few thousand chickens. Every cluck and cackle was a reminder of who was boss. I had to bring on more farmhands to help with the added work, but it was well worth it. 
started selling chickens, eggs, and pork. More money in the family coffer, not that we were wanting for it. One day out of the blue, the HOA president himself called me. This time he wasn't asking. He was begging. Said he'd stop bothering me if I moved the livestock. I shot back. How about you comply with my rules? That shut him up real quick. At this point, it was war pure and simple. These city slickers thought they could muscle old John Doe off his land, but they picked the wrong fight. I toyed with the idea of building a shooting range next, making a racket day and night. Sure enough, they dragged me back to court. This time, they were claiming all sorts of damages. Emotional distress lowered property values, you name it. The judge, though, he saw through their nonsense. Once again, he ruled in my favor, saying they were the ones instigating trouble. Even so, they weren't done. They filed more suits, each one more trivial than the last. I was spending more time in court than I was tending to my farm. The lawyers started knowing me by name and not because I was Lawson. One day it got so bad that I decided to get creative. If they wanted to fight, I'd give them one they couldn't win. I hired a top-notch environmental lawyer. Together we found some old loopholes and obscure regulations that protected farms from encroaching developments. We turned the tables slamming the HOA with so many legal documents they didn't know which way was up. They kept coming at me though, like a swarm of gnats you couldn't swat away. They tried every trick in the book. Claimed my pigs were a health hazard said my chickens violated noise ordinances. But my lawyer, sharp as a tack he was, kept punching holes in their arguments. Court dates dragged on the judge getting more exasperated each time. But he couldn't throw out any of the cases without looking like he wasn't doing his job. Clearly the HOA had money to burn and lawyers to spare so I figured I'd make him spend every last penny. I planted crops that needed round-the-clock irrigation systems right along their property line. Hired night crews to work the fields under bright lights just to irritate them. One fellow even suggested we start raising peacocks and guinea fowls. They're louder than roosters, don't you know? Pretty soon the residents of those tiny box houses started complaining to the HOA. They were fed up with the noise, smell, and lights. Meetings turned into shouting matches. Their little community started to crack at the seams. Folks were moving out selling their houses at cut-rate prices just to get away from what they started calling Farmer Does Revenge. Eventually the HOA ran out of steam. Their funds dried up and their president resigned in disgrace. The few folks left made peace and asked if we could find some middle ground. I agreed to move some of the operations further back but only after they promised to stop meddling in my business. Oh, and about that shooting range idea? Built it anyway just to keep them on their toes. Even invited the local sheriff and his deputies for weekly practice. Never hurts to keep the law on your side. Last I heard the HOA disbanded completely. Their development turned into a ghost town nothing but empty houses and overgrown lawns. Meanwhile my boys, good lads everyone, are all set to take over the farm when I'm gone. Keeps me warm inside knowing the land will stay in the family. Moral of the story, Sonny? Don't go pocking a bear unless you're ready for the claws. And let me tell you this old bear's got plenty of fight left in him. Interesting story, but I think maybe just maybe embellished just a wee bit. I do get the point some of these HOA guys really think they are God and can do anything they want and force anyone to follow their rules. They need to get shot down and stuffed into their place. If the HOA that ruined my horse farm. This is mostly just going to be a rant because I am beyond pissed and I need to get my feelings out in a productive way. My family's home is on a six-acre lot that used to be surrounded by cow farms that were passed down through generations of landowners. When we moved here back in 2004-ish, we were surrounded on all sides by farms of 300-plus acres, not a neighbor in sight, just sweet, sweet land. The neighbor who owned the cow farm to the left and back of our property let us fence part of his fields that were directly behind and to the left side of our land so we could keep our horses here rather than boarding them elsewhere. We always used electric fencing which was made out of white braided rope-like material. I'll be the first to admit it wasn't the most beautiful fencing in the world but it was safe and it kept the horses in. From a distance you could hardly see it. It was a thousand times better than the barbed wire fencing the neighbor used and he let us remove all of the barbed wire that would have been near the horses. The other neighbor's land was heavily wooded where her property met ours and years ago she had her woods partially cleared as she was using it for hunting purposes and it was too thick to be able to get through easily. While the people she hired were thinning her woods out they offered to clear any of our trees that we wanted gone since they were already out. They would pay us to clear a small portion of our land and one of the guys mentioned that he had some sort of laser leveling machine that he could use to create a riding arena for us if we'd like. He and my dad worked out a deal for them to clear the trees from the area we wanted the arena at and then level the area as a trade-off instead of taking the money for the trees. 
I ended up with an absolutely flat, beautiful riding arena that I loved. My dad fenced it with a two-board wooden fence, which wasn't exactly what I wanted. Four-board is much better. But I wasn't about to complain. So, for years I've had my perfectly level riding arena that I used to teach riding lessons and ride on my own. Then Cow Farm neighbor decided to sell. He promised my family that he would allow us the first chance to buy the portion of his land that we've been using for the past however many years. While he did keep up his end of the deal, he ultimately sold his land to a subdivision developer which has been the absolute death of me since the day their papers were signed. This particular developer created lots of five acres minimum and we were required to buy the land we were using through them rather than cow neighbor directly. This is where the HOA nightmare began. I will never for the life of me understand why anyone would want a subdivision out in the damn country or why in the absolute if airy that subdivision would want an HOA. But here we are. This HOA has been especially annoying and they like to think that they have a say in what we do with the rest of our property which does not belong to any sort of HOA. But those are stories for another day. The worst part of this in my opinion is the fact that a sliver of the arena falls onto HOA controlled property. At one point they decided that the electric fencing that ran down the far property line was unacceptable and that we could no longer use it. They also didn't approve of the two board wooden fence around my arena and wanted it to be four board. I wanted my dad to just make that one side of the arena four board and make the entire thing look idiotic. It would look so much worse to have one quarter of an arena with a four board fence while the rest was two board fence and there wouldn't be a single thing they could do about it. Of course my dad decided to just take the electric fencing down and the entire errand fencing down instead effectively cutting my horse's space in half and rendering the arena completely useless. I couldn't ride or teach up there because he left the fence post holes open and the horses could break a leg or be otherwise severely injured if they were to step in one of the holes. Now around 6 or 7 years since the HOA became a thing my dad has decided to replace the electric fence with a 4 board fence throughout the entire property. It looks fantastic and is what I've wanted for years. Basically since the moment we moved here. Both of my parents have been swearing up and down that they were going to fence all of the pastures but that they would also fence the arena. It would be the last to get new fencing but it would happen. Since my dad has finished the rest of the fencing as of today I excitedly asked my mom if that meant the arena would be next. I've been waiting literal years for this arena to be re-fenced so I could ride on it again and possibly start teaching riding lessons up there again. She informed me that now she thinks the front pasture will look too busy with a fence around the arena and that they don't want to fence it anymore. Are you a me? I have patiently waited almost seven entire years to have my arena back in a state in which I can safely and properly ride in it. I have a horse who likes to play dirty, spin ditch and gallop down to the barn when he's ridden outside of an arena and obviously can't teach riding lessons to students who can't steer my other horse without a thing fence. I have a laser-leveled arena that cannot be used. And now now they suddenly decide that after all of this months of fencing that they don't feel like fencing the arena because it will look busy. I am so completely fed up with this situation and the whole thing is entirely the effing HOA's fault. I apologize to anyone who came here wanting to hear the nitty-gritty details of what exactly this HOA has done and the bullshit they've pulled. I can write those stories out if anyone wants to hear them. I am just so entirely done with this situation and I'm frustrated that after all of this promising to fix the arena I am left in the exact same position as I was 7 years ago when all of this madness began. All I want is my nice arena to be rideable out in the country where HOA shouldn't even exist. That's all, sorry for this pointless rant. If you're horse people maybe you can appreciate my current frustration. FHOA, that's all. My neighbors still complain when people get chickens. We aren't in HOA and they are allowed. I'm sorry your neighbors are being entitled, people. If you don't like farms, don't buy a house next to a farm. Face palm. We have freaking horses that ride through our neighborhood. I don't care because they are good neighbors. Their horses never get loose and don't get spooked. Huh. So you're doing stuff for an HOA that you don't even have to. And now seven years later you're mad that your dad won't fence in your horse riding circle. How is any of that the HOA's fault? This is the most... I am a horse girl, problem that I've ever seen. I would like to thank you for watching the video to the end. To encourage us to make more videos, please like, subscribe, comment, as well as share. Check out this other video if you haven't already.